My name is David Ogoyemi, aka Dope Dave. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Alright. Uh. My name is Queen Five. Uh, my name is Dimlade. My name is Gerald. My name is Tony. Hi, my name is Miranda Ken. Hi guys, my name is EMB. I played the role of sister responsibility. I played the role of uh, investigator. I played the role of Chibi. I played the role of Ife in the movie. So Ife is uh, she's like a helpless romantic. So there are some things that if they were in place, she tends to forget about some things that are more important. Like she believes that a man has to be stable, which is important. But like a man has to be stable before <laughs> before financially stable to be able to like maintain his marriage. <laughs> but yeah, I play the role of Drizzle. Um, Drizzle is a character that tries to woo like you know this spiritual girl. You know, he feels on his first attempt, but subsequently, you know, he be getting them girls, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I played the role of uh, Dan. Dan is not stable. That's she. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Miranda Kett, and I play the role of the therapist. Amen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I play the role of Susanna in the movie. Like, the best character like, in the whole movie, you know? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not a toxic person. You saw that, right? That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Susanna in the movie, she was Dan's sister. Or she is Dan's sister, I guess. And I guess she's just living her best life. You know, she can't be bothered. Like, you know, she has a roof over her head. She has kids. And she just needs to constantly motivate Dan to be uh, yes. better. You know, she, she wants him to know that you know there's other things in life you know it's just yeah that's that's her personality i'm kidding anyway she <laughs> she's a very um toxic person i guess she was living off her brother and was still demanding things and stuff like that and um she was just not nice but i assure you that's a good personality this looks like what this question is asking secondary school <laughs> 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 One, two, three, Hajjo. Dan is not stable. As she is. <laughs> um, he's not emotionally stable. He's stable in other things. Is he stable? Financially stable. Financially stable. Okay. And six figures, remember? Right, right, right. True. Okay, so Dan is semi stable. Um, <laughs> and uh, so um, he comes from a background where I guess, you know, his parents had issues. And uh, he also has issues with his sister. So how he, how he goes about his life is reflected in those issues. And uh, and uh, a lot of things happened to him. I think, I mean, at some point he got that at the old time. So many other things happened and then that shaped that. And uh, the story is about him trying to be the lover of the affair, but it doesn't work out. My character is Drizzle, right? Um, Drizzle is a character that is very outgoing. I will not say I'm too outgoing. Like, if I'm with the people I know, I could be outgoing, but if I do not know you, I'm gonna be my shell, man. You know what I'm saying? Sister <laughs> 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 so responsibility is a very, like, straightforward Christian sister. Like, she stays, she abides by the book, by the Bible, and, like, there's no wavering for her. And I feel like when it comes to comparing the responsibility to my self, we're similar in the sense that um, I also like live by the word of God and by the Bible and try to do everything the way God wants me to do it. I also like try to influence people around me to do the right thing. Um, how I might differ from sister responsibility is I don't think I, I don't come off as strong as she does because I think sister responsibility is very this is the way to do it, she's do it this way. But I'm very subtle in the way I approach things with people. Um, so similarities. Um this is not to throw myself on the bus. You feel free. <laughs> I mean I I love, I love love. I'm so pretty. Um. Yeah, like, so you to touch it. It's okay. Yeah, 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 it's okay.
Gorgeous. Similarity. Similarity, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess <laughs> I guess I can say similarity for Jerome. Mm -hmm. Like investigators are very analytical, right? I know Jerome is that kind of somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's helping me out, so I'll take I'll take <laughs> I want you to share. <laughs> I play the role of Chidi. Um, her character is just based on the psychopath, pretty much. Like she's very unstable. Um, she sees a therapist just to try. And... Fantastic, like football or soccer player. Um, <laughs> me, not so much, you know. Um, but similarities, though. My character is fresh, you know. Of course, I'm playing the character, so I'm also fresh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Andy is very short tempered, right? Um, I am not short tempered. I take a lot of things very lightly, and I don't take it too hard the way uh, Dan does. So that would be a, a difference. Um, what else? What else does Dan do? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if this was done, you'd be angry. <laughs> Chidi's character is pretty much based on a lady who is frustrated about life, why she's single, she sees a therapist, because honestly, she's not really mentally stable. Um, and she pretty much tries to, she's being introduced to God by sister responsibility. Similarities, I feel like. Uh, ew, I can't forget, guys. I'm not going to But anyway, um, yeah, like, Chidi is pretty much a lack of party. She makes, if she's in a club, she'll make everybody laugh, and I feel like um, I have that with her. Yeah. Difference, I'm not as dumb. As a guy that's been portrayed. Just put it out there, okay? Just put it out there. What are the similarities between myself and Dan? I'm also mentally stable. <laughs> 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 I'm frustrated about my singleness. Okay. Hey. For me, like um, sometimes I, I I I think in my mind I don't think many people see me like that, but I'm a pretty romantic person. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm similar to the role of a the therapist in the sense that I would like to be with you. You know, I I, I you know create a safe space for those around me to also share their thoughts and try and you know help them rationalize what they're going through. So yeah. That's very common effect. I'm going to say I'm sorry. What's Like, if I was interrupted. <laughs> 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 what I was trying to say was uh, um, so the differences between myself and Dan is, um, <laughs> is as follows. Number one. Oh, God, we're going to be here all day. <laughs> Number one. So the difference is right. Uh, Dan is a is a uh, he is very. He's <laughs> 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 very. Uh, he okay. Let me say it's similarities. Let's put it similarities first. Um, one thing I can relate to with uh, Dan mm -hmm. is the fact that like he tries to um, to express himself. Like, I mean, he has a lot of, like, you know, deep-seated issues, right? And sometimes he doesn't know how to express it. So I do feel like sometimes I am like that to where, you know, I have a lot of things on my mind, but how to, like, you know, say, can I finish? <laughs> <laughs> how to say it, you know, in a way that uh, the message is passed across, um, you know, um, in, a, in a good way where the other person who is listening can also understand his, uh, his similarity. Um, what else? Interesting. Um... 
Yeah, that's that's probably like the only one thing I would hope I can relate to with Dan. Dan is, you know, we all know Dan. And we try to avoid that. Um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um what a difference is um Dan comes from a very unstable family. I on the other hand, through the grace of God, though I come from a very stable family. Um, um Okay, I guess yeah, and then we're both single, so yeah, that's like the last thing. I'm just kidding. Don't come back. 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 How do you know what your purpose is? That's the question. So the question is how you know your purpose, right? You know, I was expecting an extremely young question. <laughs> These questions are so provocative. Provocative. Provocative question. So I think, first of all, purpose can really be found. Um, you can't really know the heart of some like I can't really know what EABA wants me to do if I don't know her. Right? Like if I I cannot just be like, oh, if I never knew EABA and I know that okay, um and like we said earlier on, right, there's a reason we're here, right? And we all know the ultimate goes to be like Christ, but God, um, God has different channels for people. Um he has planned out different parts for people basically. So um, I can't really know what EABA wants me to do if I don't know her, right? So I can be doing or things ask or, or ask her. Also, yeah, I can think she wants me to do something, but because I don't know you, mm -hmm. then like even if because I don't know you, then I may like I, I may not know that yeah, or I may not know that that's not what you want, right? So I feel like you know your purpose by staying in the inner room with God and really spending time to know, because there yeah, we all have like a a general purpose to know god and to be a light to the world but to know your own specific calling and what area god has called you to you need to spend a lot of time in prayer with you and god alone in the word and that's where he presents to you the specific assignment that he wants for you and i find that also being planted in a community of believers in a church also helps people to draw out things that are in you that you might not know so that also helps you to shape out where your purpose is rather and i feel like it doesn't come to you one time, like at this particular instance, you know the entirety of what you're meant to do. But as you continue your Christian walk and you're walking, with, you're walking with other believers and you're spending time with God, you just find find that at the end of the day, when you look back at your life, you've just been in positions where God has wanted you to be, and you've been fulfilling purpose. Hmm. Purpose. Now I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. You know, like. On Saturday last week, right? You know, we're talking about purpose, right? You know, one thing I've learned, right? Yet again, I'm speaking from a Christian perspective here. Um, so I know the general purpose for all Christians here yeah, is to, um, you know, preach the gospel, right? You know, one way or the other, right? So even though I might not know my specific purpose, right? As long as I'm still in that general purpose. I feel like, or well, I know that at some point, God will align you to your specific purpose, right? You know. So one thing I'm learning to do now is like, whatever I find myself doing, I should try to make it be in line with that general purpose, and I know for sure God will align me, right? Like God is not out of confusion, and He will want you to be more effective in whatever you're doing, as long as you're open-minded. So key thing, what I'm saying is. Do something in line with the general purpose and you find a specific purpose. So I believe that every human and earth, their purpose is to serve God. And as you're doing that, everything will be revealed. Like God puts opportunities to come your way and God will actually place you in path with what he wants you to do. So I believe the purpose is just to serve God. I don't think you'll be able to know exactly what your purpose is. Yeah. And um, that's where it's like, prayer comes in where you have to like keep in communication with god and like just asking for him to be able to like show to you what your actual purpose on life is so like 
right before then, I mean, it could be, like what you said, it could be doing something that's towards a general purpose, right? But in, all through that, you should be in constant communication with God. You should, you should be uh, surrounding yourself with people who who actually believe in what you believe in as well. So then you go, like, you go encourage each other like, and do what God wants you to do ahead, right? Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, after prayers, after, you know, um, conversations you have with like other people with the same faith i feel like your purpose will become more clear so yeah love is deep. love is all encompassing you mm. can't you can't just see somebody and like that's why people um now you Players that want to believe in that. I don't know. How can you just want to first time? I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. No. For me, it depends. Let's say if you see like a job for the first time and it's looking really good. I mean, you fall in love with it. I feel like you shouldn't love somebody at first. Like, don't do it. Yeah, like, I totally resonate with that, you know, but one thing I'm really careful about is, like, for example, emotions can be crazy, right, you know, and there are so many people, like, once you just look at them, you're like, wow, this person is so attractive, you know, but I've learned that beyond that attraction, beyond, you know, the nice figure and everything, you have to look at uh, some characters, you know. So character is really crucial for me. Because, you know, I'll see some fine beer, I'll be like, ah, this guy is really <laughs> so so. But uh, over some, some span of days, the way she talks to people, treat other people, you'll be like, nah, this one is not um, white material. <laughs> but yeah, for me, not really. It could happen, but nah, not for me, I don't think so. It depends on the definition of love. Mm. Because if your definition of love is very vague, then I get why the definition of love is deep. You cannot love on that person well, like, because love okay. entails love entails a lot. That is loving the person as a whole, including their imperfection. So how would you love someone with perfection if you don't love the person? Mm-hmm. First of all, I feel like love is more than feelings, right? Like Definitely. feelings fade, mm-hmm. right? You can you can't always depend on feelings. Like that's why even when somebody is like. Um, or getting on your nerves, you still choose to love them. You can't just have that when you first see somebody. So it's it's a more it has more it's more rooted than um, just seeing somebody. That's, you can like somebody today, and then after two months, they're like, oh wow, what the heck? Why, why did I never like would yeah. ever see? So that all of that is just attraction, and you can be infatuated with somebody. But to actually say you love somebody, it takes more than just that physical attraction. God is always speaking, right? You know, but it's 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 our own part for us to be sensitive in the spirit, right? You know, to listen to God's voice. And a lot of people expect the audible voice, like, hey, Gerald, <laughs> go and do something for me, you know. But that's not how God speaks, you know, um, primarily, right? God speaks to your spirit, right? Because your spirit is the one that is saved. And that is like the only way, your, like, your most holy part, you know, by which you can connect to, right? Because God is holy, right, you know? So, through the Holy Spirit in your spirit, God can speak to us, right, you know? And sometimes, you might not even necessarily hear a voice, you just know that this is what I'm supposed to do, right, you know? And a lot of times, when I disobey, like, that um, intuition, right, you know, like, when God is speaking to me, right, it ends up in a very bad situation, but God usually delivers me, right? So I'm now I'm learning that, okay, if I just feel like something is off, I just calm down, like, God, what are you trying to tell me in this situation? So I know that is how God speaks to me, and I feel like that is how God speaks to a lot of Christians. However, as we progress in our relationship with God, right, you know, God can, like, I don't know, God can, you know, come in, maybe visions, right, or dreams, but it's not that we should be expecting God that God, ah, I need you to come to my vision, you know, the enemy is very, very uh, crafty, you can just see that you're praying that kind of prayer and be like, <laughs> I'll appear to you in the dream today, I'll tell you so, you even want to hear voices, I'll make you hear voices, <laughs> right, you know, so there, there's even a story of this lady, right, from Kenneth Yeadin's book, right, she was, 
she was praying that God would speak to her audibly, right? You know, and the enemy capitalized on that, and that's how she was just hearing wrong voices, like you know, um, and because the enemy operates through our senses, right? You know, and hearing is also part of our sense, right? You know, but a deeper level of of hearing from God is a spiritual level, right? Which is the hard part, right? Because human beings they like to dwell in the sense realm rather than in the spiritual realm because we are we're physical beings right even though we're also spiritual beings but because we're in we're in this world we always want to you know express our senses but going away from our comfort zone would really help amplify our spiritual senses to to hear from god i'm still learning by the way but yeah that, that's primarily how god speaks i think everybody can hear but sometimes you might not be able to recognize it as the voice of god and i mm-hmm. think also it depends on um to some extent the revelation so that you can you receive or the clarity of the voice depends on how much you spend time in knowing who god is how how much you spend time how you develop intimacy with christ your relationship with christ right because just like for example if you just meet someone today and um i'm trying to do like a practical example right it's like if you just meet someone today and you're just chatting with them the level in which you're able to be free with them will be different from if you have gone far in your relationship if you are friends for like five years or so right the things that you share with the person how you speak to them will be like they might just be able to hear your your, your voice on the phone and recognize that this is who is speaking to me they know your voice but if you just meet someone today they might not be like oh sorry excuse me who are you what's your name again so i think um everybody can care but it might be to different varying degrees yeah. hi so i played the role of chidi and you <laughs> <laughs> god <laughs> so far i've talked about i think three differences three similarities but yeah, that's it. Yeah, I want to play. It's okay, it's okay. You get it. Are you sure? Very sure. Let me myself. Yeah, you actually do that job. Oh, thanks, thanks. Oh, my God. I'm not going to do that. 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 The happy she is in two. You see now, you see that comment. Uh-huh. Because he's my friend, I could be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is the end goal of life? The end goal of life is to live in purpose, right? Yeah. And that's, to be honest, that doesn't even mean anything. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, right? It's, like, it's like, it's one of those deep things that people say that you're like, what does that even mean? Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you say the end goal, what do you mean? <laughs> when it's end goal, God can talk and use anybody and everybody next.